Good day grade 9 learners and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. In this lesson today, we'll be looking at the cash transactions and how they affect the accounting equation. In the previous lesson, we looked at the cash transactions that affect trading businesses and how they affect the CPJ and the CRJ. Firstly, let's revise on the accounting equation. Assets equals to owner's equity plus liabilities. For example, if assets are 5,000 Rand, then the owner's equity plus the liabilities must equate to 5,000 Rand. In grade 9, we saw them have liabilities as examples. So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at assets and owner's equity. So the following formula is as follows. Assets equals to owner's equity. Let's look at a few examples. Analyze the transaction on the screen according to the answer sheet. This business sells goods at a profit markup of 100% on cost price. The owner increased his capital contribution from 100,000 Rand to 150,000 Rand by depositing money into the business's bank account. In this example, it is very important to not be confused. The capital contribution is 50,000 Rand because the owner went from 100,000 Rand to 150,000 Rand. So the owner increased it with 50,000 Rand. Right, now that we understand that, we can start to look at the accounting equation. Your assets increase with 50,000 Rand because your cash, which is the bank, petty cash or cash float, increases because the business receives money. You can write cash or bank, both is correct. Now remember, we always do accounting from the point of view of the business. So please don't get confused with the owner and the business. The owner's equity increases with 50,000 Rand because the owner gave a capital contribution to the business. The assets equal to owner's equity because the assets are 50,000 Rand and the owner's equity is also 50,000 Rand, which means the accounting equation is correct. The source document in this example is a duplicate receipt. The owner got the receipt and not the business. It will also be correct if you write bank deposit slip. In this case, it's when the business deposits the money into the bank and the bank issues the source document to the owner. The journal is a CRJ, a cash receipt journal because the business receives the money. Remember, when we are speaking about the CRJ, which is the cash receipts journal, that is money coming into the business. Later, we'll be speaking about the CPJ, the cash payments journal, which is money leaving the business. Okay, let's see if you can do the second example on your own. The business bought stationery per EFT number one for 1,800 Rand. Now, before we look at this example, notice it says bought. Now we'll be looking at the CPJ, which is the cash payments journal. Breaking this down further, remember it says EFT number one. So remember grade nines, we looked at source documents. So the EFT is the method in which the business has done the transaction. Now that we've looked at the example, I'm gonna put the accounting equation up and discuss where you're going to put the 1,800 Rand bought for stationery on the accounting equation. So in this example, the business assets decrease because your cash or bank decreases with 1,800 Rand because the business paid money for the stationery. The owner's equity decreases with 1,800 Rand because stationery is an expense and expenses decrease your owner's equity. So learners always do the equation test. Are the assets equal to the owner's equity? Yes, it is because the assets is negative 1,800 Rand and the owner's equity is negative 1,800 Rand. So the accounting equation is correct. The source document is an electronic fund transfer or an EFT. Now this is because the business has done the transaction via a EFT. Now remember the reference is the number one, which is also gonna be used in the accounting equation. The journal is the CPJ, which is a cash payments journal because the business paid money. Let's look at that example one more time. In looking at any question or example, first need to evaluate and break down the sentence. 
So in this example, we looked at the word bought. Bought is money leaving the business, meaning we're placing this in the CPJ or the cash payments journal. Secondly, there was the EFT, which is the method of payment. And number one was the reference, which is going to be placed in the source document on the accounting equation. All right, Linus, so we broke down the last example. Break down this one. So the business bought trading stock by amount of 5,000 Rand via what? EFT number two. Now that you have broken it down, place this on the accounting equation. So in this example, the business assets increased with 5,000 Rand. This is because trading stock was bought, which increases the trading stock section. Remember, trading stock is a current asset. Your assets also decrease with 5,000 Rand because your cash or bank decreases as the business had to pay for the trading stock. In this example, the assets increase with 5,000 Rand and also decrease with 5,000 Rand. So the assets are zero and the owner's equity is also zero. The source document is an EFT reference number because the payment was done via EFT. The journal is the CPJ or the cash payments journal because our business paid money. All right, learners, you're doing very well. Let's keep it going and let's look at another example. The next example is a rent income. The business received payment for rent from our tenant of 12,000 Rand. All right, learners, let's stop and evaluate the example. The business received money. That is money coming into the business. Is that a CPJ or a CRJ? It is a CRJ, a cash receipts journal. But why is it a CRJ? That's because the business receives money. All right, grade nines, now let's look at the accounting equation. In this example, the business assets increase with 12,000 Rand. This is because your cash or bank increases because the business received money. Your owner's equity increases with 12,000 Rand because we received rent income, which increases the owner's equity. And again, the assets equate to the owner's equity. The source document is a duplicate receipt because the tenant got the original receipt. The journal is the CRJ or the cash receipts journal because our business received money for rent income. All right, let's do one last example for this lesson. The business sold stock with a cost price of 200 Rand according to the cash register roll. A quick tip, you will need the markup of 100% on cost price for this example. We need to identify the correct strategy in tackling the question. All right, in this example, they gave us the cost price, but we need the selling price to be able to put it in the accounting equation. So let's start to calculate the selling price. All right, so we did this in our previous lessons. If you don't know, go check it out. But here we go. In this example, the business sells goods with a profit markup of 100% on cost price. Remember that there's always a cost price and a selling price. And remember that the cost price is always a 100%. We have the cost price of 200 Rand. Using your formula, cost price plus gross profit equals to selling price. That is a 100% plus a 100% which equates to 200%. Always remember to divide the unknown by the known, which is 200 divided by 100 times 200 Rand, which equals to 400 Rand. Your assets increase with 400 Rand selling price because your cash or bank increases because the business received the money. Your assets also decrease with 200 Rand cost price because our trading stock decreases. We sold the stock. Your owner's equity increases with 200 Rand. That is 400 Rand minus 200 Rand, which gives you a profit of 200 Rand. This increases your owner's equity because the profit is a positive 200 Rand. And again, using the equation test, assets equals to owner's equity, both are 200 Rand. The source document is a cash register roll. The journal is the cash receipts journal or the CRJ because our business received money. All right, grade nine learners, 
I know this was a lot of content to go through. If there's still things you don't understand, feel free to watch this video again and again. This marks the end of lesson three. I hope you understand the accounting equation a bit more and I'll see you next time where we'll be looking at the CRJ and the CPJ for trading businesses. Moving over to the summary of this lesson, here are the key concepts of what we learned today. Pause and write them down.